Go ahead. Keep talking about USC's defense. USC's team, they're ready for fall camp. They're done talking. You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Fight on, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Culkin, and thank you for making Locked On USC part of the Locked On Network, your first listen every day. Whether you're watching the show on YouTube, wherever you are downloading the show, the show is always free, and the show will always appreciate your support. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Today. USC held its uh, its own media day, set aside just for the local media. Everybody in print, TV, radio, online, um, everyone was there. And everyone, you know, they're all talked out, including myself, to be honest with you. <laughs> I can't ask. I don't know if there's any more questions I can ask uh, that these guys haven't already heard, especially Lincoln Riley. Um Assistant coaches, we got to talk to them for the last time um, going into fall camp. So it was good to get that out of the way. But again, all the questions that, you know, have been asked that can be answered, uh, you know, and even the ones we won't, you know, that we really want to ask, to ask those, you know, those aren't going to get answered anyways. You know, questions like, you know, how much better is life without, you know, with a new defensive coordinator? No one's going to answer that question directly. but. You get where I'm going with this. So it's for me, when I go to these types of events, it's it's not about what they say, but it's how they say it. I'm, I'm doing some observations, taking some notes. And that's you know that, that's what I wanted to do. I'm getting myself ready for first first ball camp practice, which is on Friday. All the assistant coaches were there. Over 40 players, so over 50 people that, you know, we were trying to talk to between 11, 15 a.m. and, what, 2.30 in the afternoon. That was the, the the window of opportunity to get everybody, to get everybody a question asked and, and answers for each question. It was interesting. Um, it almost felt like a Chinese fire drill because of the way everything was going about it. I got there early. Again, started at 11, 15. Um, when I was a kid growing up, you know, I would actually sleep in my uniform <laughs> the night before just so I'd be ready to go when the sun came up. I'm the same way as an adult. When I have an event, you know, I need to be at, I'm just going to kind of just throw caution to the wind and I'm going to be there early. But it, this is how I learned so much behind the scenes stuff, you know, um, it's that whole early bird catches the worm philosophy. Being there early today, I got a chance to watch Mason Cobb walk his dog. <laughs> Not really walking his dog. You know, dog was running. Mason was on his scooter heading on inside to uh, the McKay Center. To get some training in before it was his time to come speak with the media, which was still a few hours away. Because I was there early, I also took a few minutes to go check out USC's new practice field where the new football only facility will be located and uh looks great looks great uh, the new the new field turf that was installed so now usc has natural grass that they could practice on and then because they play on both types of surfaces they could practice on the new field turf when they're playing a game that week on somebody who has that in the, inside their stadium as well you know if usc has to practice in the rain wet you know wet weather type of environment they don't have to practice on the grass and tear up the field so again all positives something else though that i noticed when i was looking at the beautiful new field that they installed and where the new building is going to be erected one of the things i wanted to see was reggie bush's Heisman back inside heritage hall and when you go inside USC's practice field, and when you walk through Goo Gate that takes you inside Howard Jones Field, you'll see the walls. They're they're padded and they're painted in cardinal cardinal color, 
And then all of USC's history, it's kind of adorned, painted in gold, telling you how many All-Americans they have, Heisman winners, national champions. Um, do me a favor, because I had to ask somebody when this detail would be fixed. You know, would it happen before the first day of fall camp? I still noticed seven national champions, excuse me, seven Heisman Trophy winners. USC has eight. Like I said, look, if you're going to spend hundreds of millions of dollars on new fields, new buildings, I'll chip in a few extra bucks, okay? Go buy a can of gold spray paint. You can fix this problem in 30 seconds. Change the All-American number. Change the Heisman number. It's up to hard. Pay attention to the details. So again, I got I got to see all that. Offer some criticism, constructive criticism. Made my way over to Heritage Hall eventually. And I thought, oh, great, great. I can see all eight Heismans on display, mounted in all of their majesty. They weren't there. They were gone. I was like, okay, there's no recruiting going on. So where are they? I walk into the Bachelor Lounge where they're holding the event. And really nice touch. Every Heisman was placed on a table. So wherever, you know, someone was going to sit down, they get to stare at Carson Palmer's Heisman, Reggie Bush, Caleb Williams. All eight of them were there. So, again, because the new field turf is now installed, Coach Riley did mention that um, they can start using it right away. It's available. We'll see how they put it to use on the Friday. One other quick note about the new football facility. Uh, the baseball field has already been moved. Dato, yeah. Home plate is now backed up on Vermont Avenue. <laughs> it looks a little different, but uh, I think it'll be, people will get used to it very easily. Uh, so again, started at 1115. Lincoln Riley was fashionably late, just a few minutes. Nevertheless, um, he was, they, they kept the day on schedule. They, when somebody was scheduled to go on the microphone, they were on the microphone when it was time to turn it off, time was up. They gave us a few extra questions, but they kept it moving along. It was really cool. Coach Raleigh spoke for about five minutes. Didn't take a whole lot of time up there. Uh, he wanted to thank us for our support, uh, telling their story and says, you know, he does hear us. You know, he does try to be as accommodating as possible. Um, he, he tries to provide for the media as much as they can. But again, he's never going to sacrifice preparing the team first. So just got to take it for what it's worth. Now, he, because he didn't take any questions, it was just really a, a statement saying, welcome back type of thing. And I'll see you on Friday. I wonder if he didn't take any questions, if any part of that decision had to do with his comments at USC's Big Ten Conference Media Day regarding the Notre Dame rivalry? Yeah. Uh, look, I'm just playing conspiracy, conspiracy theorist. I, I asked him as many questions as I possibly could a week ago. So I do wonder, though, I'm going to ask him when I see him on Friday, even if it's off the record, you want to clarify your thoughts. You want to mulligan on that one. Because there are still a lot of people talking about it which I thought was pretty interesting. Uh, Coach Joss Henson, he was up next after Coach Riley. You know, he is the, uh, at least on paper, the offensive of coordinator. <laughs> and uh, he, he brought up, he, he mentioned a few things about the offensive line, gave lots of praise for guys like, uh, the younger guys specifically, uh, Tobias Raymond, Alani Noah, Amos Talolele. Uh, he said Elijah Page was another guy. Tobias Raymond is much farther along than people think. Uh, when he talked about Mason Murphy, he, he basically said this. It's it's going to be about consistency, uh, but he's in a much different place than he was compared to two years ago. So we'll find out. Mason even said, I, it's my job. I got to I got to be consistent. Both of the tackles, Mason and Elijah, those are the Two, you know, main topics when it came to the offensive line. And it was, uh, Coach Henson brought up uh, an, in an interesting um, anecdote that he, he mentioned about Elijah's development. 
last season as a true freshman. And he was talking about how when things really clicked for Elijah, because it really showed up in the Holiday Bowl. Well, it what happened was uh, sometime maybe sixth, seventh, eighth game of the season last year, they sent Elijah over to the scout team. And the lesson was it, it was it, it was teaching Elijah that you know you have to be consistent every single play, bring that same effort. So um, when I got to talk with Coach Nua, I, I had that in the back of my mind, and I wanted to know if there was any players in his you know defensive end group that needed any finger quotes extra motivation. And he said, look, no, I'm not waiting for anybody. <laughs> Guys better be ready. What he is really happy about, though, is he loves the mass. He loves the size uh, that he gets to work with this year. So take from that what you will. Obviously, last year, defensive line didn't look like it needed to be. My big takeaway before I wrap up this segment is all the coaches, um, very impressive. Love their candor. Very appreciate, and I'm very appreciative of that. Uh, there's still a lot of coach speak. Don't get me wrong. Um, you know, they're always going to keep the important stuff guarded, but for the most part, very forthcoming. Right? They're not afraid. To, like Coach Henson, he he's not going to sugarcoat anything. He will say these are the players that if they don't get the job done, I'll put the younger guy in behind him. I don't got time. That's the message. I spoke with Coach Anthony Jones Jr., uh, running backs coach. <laughs> I asked him, you know, if uh, student body right and student body student body left was still in the playbook, and he paused for just a second. You know, kind of one of those things. He goes, "I think so, but it's called something different." <laughs> when the camera was off, I actually asked. I said, "Can you describe student body left, student body right?" And, I'll be honest right now, his answer didn't lend any confidence that the play is still being used. Uh, he said, yeah, everybody goes left, everybody goes right. So in theory, he's correct. <laughs> but uh, I was I was looking for a little bit more detailed answer. Again, if we see one side of USC's offensive line, tackle and guard pulling, going to the right, student body right. If you see the right side of the line, going to the left, student body left. It's basically smash mouth football. I would love to have a fullback going behind that as well, but that's another story for another day. Coach Jones, by the way, I'm not sure if you knew this. He played his college football at UT Chattanooga. That's an FC, FCS level school. Um, but he was asked the question, hey, have you checked out the new video game? I'm not a video game guy. So he says, yeah, you know, when I was playing, um, they gave me a, a 69 rating, but they gave me an 83 speed. So he was really proud of that. What I will tell you this about Coach Jones. Um, he loves teaching. He's going to have a really big positive effect, not just with the running back room, but the team in general. He loves teaching. And then Coach Doug Belk, Coach Matt Ince, both made a really big impression on me today. Um, Coach Ence is he said he's developing his recruiting relationships. Uh, he said he wants to own the state of California, but he also said what he called, he wants to own the state of LA. And he was like, the five counties that make up the metro L LA area, we need to know who the best players are, but we also need to identify if they're the right fit. He wanted to make sure he got that part in. It was really important. Again, all the coaches, impressive speakers, very impressive communicators. And even the players, they kept talking about that when we sat down with them when it was their opportunity. So I'll have more. Um, again, lots to cover. Just want to kind of give you a, some quick notes and observations, some takeaways. I'll do that in the next segment uh, from USC's Media Day in house. Like you, you're like me, you like baseball, you want your favorite Major League Baseball park. Mine, Dodger Stadium. Doing it before it got really expensive. Now, if I want to go to Dodger Stadium, I'm going to game time because they've got killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, and they even give you views from your seat 
and the best price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. You can see the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. They have the all-in prices, so you see you can see your total up front. And that way, you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. And you can buy your tickets in seconds. It'll take you two taps. Two taps. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last-minute seats. If you're going to Las Vegas, get your seats now. And the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. So if you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time's going to credit you 110% of that difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D like David O-N for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Are you watching Fox Sports? Sure you are. Are you watching ESPN? Absolutely. You're probably doing it all day long. But sometimes throughout the day, you're hitting that mute button because someone's yelling, someone's screaming. If you make the switch to Lock on Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel, and it's programmed for you every day to bring you all the biggest stories, without all the yelling, you'll be much happier. Locked on Sports Today brings you can't miss analysis, opinions, and news, and streaming for you 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. First, foremost, uh, I need to let you know, this is my biggest takeaway uh, from the day. It, this team, yeah, there's a very quiet confidence among this group. It's hard to it's hard to describe it. It's not what they're saying. It's not really how they're acting. They're not overconfident. They're not cocky. They're not arrogant. Just going about their business, smile on their face, willing to answer the questions, not shying away from what happened last year. You can just feel it. Last year, they it was a learning experience, very humbling in a lot of ways. Not just for the coaching, not just for Lincoln Riley and, and, and the coaches who remained. Obviously, the players. That was a big learning experience. They knew that there was a lot of anticipation going into 2023, and it just didn't work out, right? Elijah Page, you know, I, I talked about it in the, in the first segment, how um, he had to be put on you know, when he went to the scout team, he didn't have time to pout about it. He said, look, I had to put on my big boy pants. I, I didn't have time to sulk. Um, and basically, he's like, he figured it out real quickly because when you're on the scout team, you're you're getting your ass kicked every single repetition going up against the ones and the twos. So I was like, oh, this is what it takes. Sometimes, freshmen, it takes a little bit longer to learn. Sometimes, like, all right, you can look at it as a demotion, or you can look at, look at it as a learning experience. I think Elijah will be the first one to tell you. It helped him grow. He is now ready. You saw what it looked like. You saw how he played in the Holiday Bowl. He probably doesn't get to that level without heading on over to the scout team and having USC's defensive guys run him up and down. That's what it took. And look, I get it. Everybody wants to know about the defense, if they're going to be ready. Um, as Coach Danton Lynn, we asked him, is the defense ready? And he says, he said this, as far as being where, where he wants them to be. Um, Coach, Coach Lynn said, and he was emphatic about this, we are. When, and, but we were, he was, when we were asking him about where he wants the team to be in terms of size and weight. He said every single player who had a target weight that they had to hit during the offseason, every single one of them, 100%. So that's a good sign. They've bought in. There's discipline. There's some accountability. I talked about it on yesterday's episode of Locked on USC, how Benny Wiley gets a lot of credit. But even the players today, they start talking about Rachel Suva, the nutrition program what they're doing inside Little Galen. 
So I gave you the preview. I heard it from Traveler's mouth, so to speak, from the horse's mouth. <clears throat> they're all enjoying the new program that they're on. Uh, Coach Lynn said he talked about the players, who, certain players who took um, strides this summer in terms of mastering, you know, what their primary position is going to be. Um, but also, he said they were learning the entire defense. And he gave these examples, he, he, like a defensive tackle learning the entire defensive front. So it doesn't matter if you play the the one or the three technique, you got to learn how to play both defensive ends as well. That's good cross training. That's going to be beneficial. And that goes to Coach Coach Lynn talking about ha- keep being able to keep guys on the field and their versatility. That's what that's all about. Um, he, he gave examples of, and he also talked about, he, I'll, I'll quote this. He said, our players did a great job of doing a lot of work on their own. So the players, basically, they had meetings and a walkthrough on Mondays, and that's with the coaches. But everything outside of that, it's Benny Wiley. He's the man in charge. And then the players, you know, getting their player-run practices scheduled. All that. Uh, he said that they did a great job as far as meeting together, um, just with the players, as far as studying their playbooks, and that they're further ahead right now than that. That he actually said this: they are further ahead right now than I thought they'd be. So, yes, the team met their size and weight goals. They're still installing the defense, but I don't know. Maybe it was Coach Speak. He thinks this these the unit is farther along than they were than they should be at this point. We'll see. Um, and I, talking about the the, the slow install, uh, Coach. Uh, he he kind of emphasized that they're going to continue to uh, to con- with that same slow, deliberate pace um, that they used in the spring. So if it's working, you know, if it's not broken, don't fix it. It's the same thing he did when he was at UCLA last year. And he said, you know, in looking back at what he did last season at UCLA, you know, he was able to make make some small tweaks in how you know how he did a complete install. So. He now has something to fall back on. He looked back at what he did last year and said, all right, that worked. And now I'm at USC. I'm going to take that same business model, but I'm going to tweak it just a little bit. And he's happy with the results. (laughs) Yeah, a little busy right now. So, um, again, this is a pace. It's a plan that uh, he, the assistants, everyone just feels really comfortable right now. As far as that defensive front, he said there are no concerns, at least publicly there are no concerns. Quote, I'm super excited and confident about that group. Okay. Could be coach speak. We'll see. Coach Lynn said, this is what I found was one of his most interesting notes. Uh, Gavin Meyer, the most recent addition. He said he wants, Gavin Meyer is a guy he wants all the young players to watch in how he does everything from film room to weight room to practices. The reason I find that really interesting, look, we know that Lincoln Riley and Eric Henderson and Dan Lynn and Sean Nua, they were really looking at that transfer portal after uh, spring camp. They needed help inside. Gavin Meyer was the last guy picked. You know, he's just standing there like, you know, on the playground. Remember what it was like being picked for kickball, that last kid standing? That was Gavin Meyer. But now you got Coach Lynn saying, um, that's the guy everybody should be modeling after. He does it the right way. We're going to see what happens when when it's time to play football. We'll see if the words match the actions. Uh, The new guys are also available. I'm talking about... Other transfers, Jay Fair, G- Gavin Meyer, Greedy Vance, new kicker, Michael Lance as well. Uh, they were all there. I, I've talked about this before. You know, starters, they don't transfer to sit at their new school. Um, Greedy Vance said this. He, uh, he said, you never really know how it's going to go because some people might view transfers kind of as a threat to playing time. So um, he then told us that, you know, a big group, 
of the players that were on the team, both sides of the ball, not just defense, not just the guys in the secondary, they actually went out of their way to welcome him. Um, Jay, and he said, there was this one, there was a, he was on campus for just a short amount of time. And then Miller Moss, he sent out a text message, said, hey, going out for a throwing session. And he said, after that throwing session, all the players was hung out afterward. And that it was the first time meeting everybody for him. And he said, when that happened, I was pretty excited. I had a great feeling about this year. That's all it takes. Just your teammate coming up to you. Hey, let's go hang out. Arm around the shoulder. Let's go get some to eat. That's all it takes. It makes that homesickness go away. Jay Fair, he transferred um, from Auburn. Greedy Vance, Florida State. Gavin Meyer, Wyoming. This is what Gavin Meyer said. Open arms of how the defensive line received him. I was like really happy they were able to do that and not make the transition any harder than it was. That's that's pretty candid. Pretty candid. Um, so look, the culture fit, the locker room vibe, the team leadership, all of that was on display with that feedback that I just heard from Gavin Meyer. That quote I just gave you, it, it, it epitomizes all of that. I, I think I can, I will say this. Coach Danton Lynn, he is what cures US, what ails USC. We know the defense last year. I, I talked about the confidence. They they get it from Coach Lynn. The way he, you know, the, the, the way the USC, the, the defensive players spoke about his scheme and his coaching style. Let me give you some quotes. With Coach Lynn, you, You've seen what he did in one year, making them one of the best defenses in the country. That was Easton Mascarenas Arnold referring, you know, looking back at what he did at UCLA. So for me, I expect nothing less. We have the potential to be one of the best. The culture, I think, is a lot different than what the media has portrayed us as. The negative connotation of this team is something you see outside. But when you're in the locker room with the guys and on the defensive side of the ball, especially with the new faces, it's a lot more connected than you think. He, he's talking about Coach Lynn, rides the constant wave of just being level-headed, and he lets us control the emotions. Uh, Easton, he, he, he talked about um, how in control they feel about this defense already because, you know, they've already repped a, you know, specific plays. He said an estimated a thousand times. <laughs> so again, it's all about that slow, methodical install. But now you know why they're probably further ahead than maybe where everybody anticipates them to be. Look, bottom line is this. USC players, they weren't going to let anything get out, tell us, um, that you would probably say, all right, hey, that might, bold some, that might be bulletin board material. Uh, they don't hear everything, but they've heard enough. And it's pretty clear that uh, some of it – has made its way to USC's bulletin board. They're, they're ready to get on the field. They're, they're ready to do something about it. Yeah, this team has a really great vibe this year. Last year, it was the Caleb Williams show. You know, you're going to ride that wave. Absolutely. But look, it's not just what they said. It, it's it, it, a few of the players, they just alluded to it. It's just more of a team focus this year, if you know what I mean. I guess that's the best way for me to describe it. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home that winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. And eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need and the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers.
I, I am going way over schedule here, but we're going to squeeze this in before I get out of here. I've been getting some requests. Mark, when are you going to talk about USC hoops? Guess what? Tomorrow. So while you're watching this episode of Locked on USC, I'm going to be at a hoops practice. Last one of the summer. Get to watch the whole thing. Not going to be able to take any video. That mandate was laid down. But I'm going to get a chance to, you know, talk with Coach Eric Musselman for the first time. Uh, there's going to be some selected players that I get to speak with as well. Whatever. The media. Not just me. <laughs> um, but I'll tell you what. I'll be honest. I have never felt this naked. This, this ignorant, naive, un, uninformed about a USC basketball team. This is what I know about this year's squad. A lot of transfers. A lot of talented guys are, that are being brought in. And I know Harrison Hornier returned. That's it. That's all I know right now. I'm kind of embarrassed to admit it. But you know what? That might be a, maybe that's a good thing. Totally ambivalent. Not having any opinion one way or another. No bias. No secret rooting interest. So... What I, I'll be able to see is I'll see what kind of action coach runs, you know, what kind of offense he's putting in. Remember, I used to coach high school basketball. <laughs> I know what I know. These trained eyes. I'm being sarcastic for those of you who can't see my face, who are listening to wherever you're downloading your favorite podcast, Locked on USC. So, again, I'll, I'm, I'm really interested to see how he runs a practice. Um, I, I watched how Coach Enfield used to do his. So I want to say, you know, how much emphasis is on defense? How much is on rebounding? Effort, energy. You know, where does Coach Must blow that whistle when he's, no, we're not doing it the right way, that type of stuff. I get, you know, I'll be able to learn some names, the faces, introduce myself. Looking forward to it, actually. I need to get that hoops vibe back that was I lost last year. It was killed. You know, if you are an everyday viewer, listener of this show, and let's go back to last season, you, you'll remember I said, you know, I had an odd feeling going into it. It, it just didn't feel right. I'd been to some of the practices, talked to some of the players. It just didn't feel right. It didn't have the right vibe. Too much ego, NIL attitude, not enough team concept. It wasn't... It wasn't like in your face, but it was just the way the team was constructed. It just didn't, I've said it before, it had that that Lakers team of Kobe and Shaq and Carl Malone and Gary Payton. Every, you know, everybody thought, hey, all-star team cannot lose. And yeah, they got to the finals, but it looked like crap. It just, they didn't look like a good team. I was going to go off on a tangent and blame one specific person because everything he touches turns to caca when he's done, but I'm not going to do that. All I'm going to say is one of these days I'll be able to watch the Lakers again. But, all right, I'm going to basketball practice tomorrow. I'll, so next episode of Locked on USC, I will give you a little bit of what I've learned from there. I'm excited. You should be too. Last year is last year. We're moving forward. It's a new era of USC men's hoops. Coach Eric Musselman is the coach. Returning with Harris Hornery and a cast of others. I'll let you know who those others are on the next episode of Locked on USC. And I might even have some recruiting information on the football side. So until then, everyone, you know what to do.